All right, this is a little tutorial on how to calculate or determine the infrared active modes using symmetry and point groups. And as an example, we'll start off with ammonia, which is NH3, and I have the structure uh, in the, on the left side. Ammonia has a symmetry point group of C3V, and I have the character table noted on the right side. And we'll need both of these to determine the infrared stretching uh, or vibrational active bands. Okay, so we need to look at each one of these operations, which the identity operation, E, and the C3 operation, or rotation about the primary axis, and reflection operations, which is sigma V, which are reflections in line with the primary axis, vertical reflections. So first we need to determine how many unshifted atoms there are for each operation. For E, which is the identity operation, there are, all atoms are unshifted because there's no movement of anything. So if we look here, that should be uh, one, two, three, four atoms. So let's just write that down here, four. For C3, the only atom that will not move during that operation is the nitrogen because all the hydrogens will be rotating around it. So we just write a one here. And then for a reflection plane, we always try to include as many atoms as possible in it, but that reflection plane includes the nitrogen and one of the hydrogens, and the other two hydrogens reflect back and forth uh, to each other. So something uh, that would be two atoms that are unshifted and two shift. All right. We also need to write down the contribution per atom for each point group, or for each group. For the identity operation, the contribution per atom is three. Uh, for the C3 operation, the contribution per atom is zero. And for the sigma or reflection plane operation, contribution per atom is one. And then we need to multiply contribution per atom times the number of unshifted atoms and then also multiplied by the number of operations. The number of operations is indicated in the character table and it is right here for each one of these operations. So for the identity operation it's one. For C3 there are two of them and for uh, reflection planes there are three. So one, two, and three. If we multiply each one of these, we should get the reducible representation, which will be 12, 0, and 6. Now we need to start reducing this reducible representation, which is usually denoted by lambda. To reduce the reducible representation, uh, we need to multiply each position in the uh, reducible representation by the character that it, that it is in the character table. So to determine how many A1 representations we have, if we just take 12. times the character in the table, which is 1, plus 0 times 1, plus 
six times one. And this is eighteen. Then we need to divide by the order of the group. And the order of the group is determined by adding up the coefficients for each operation. So 1 plus 2 plus 3, the order of the group is 6. So then we divide by 6, which should be 3. We do the same thing for A2. 1 times 12 plus 1 times 0 plus negative 1 times 6. That is 6. And divide by 6 is 1. And then finally for E. 2 times 12 is 24, plus 0, plus 0 is 24 divided by 6, is 4. Now we're not quite done yet because we need to remove all of the translation and rotation operations that exist. A1 has one translation operation because it is in the Z direction. A2 has a single rotation operation in the Z direction. And the E character has the XY translations and the R and rotations about the x-axis and y-axis. Both of these transform together and so they count as one together for the E because they're in the parentheses here. Okay, so we subtract one of the A1s so we should be left with uh, two A1s remaining and we subtract the A2, so there are no A2s remaining. And we take off two operations for E, because, again, they transform together. So we have XY transforming together, so they count as one, and um, the rotations transform together, so they also count as one. So we subtract two from that, which leaves two E operations. All of these modes are infrared active, and you can tell that they're infrared active because those have coordinate axes, uh, same symmetry as the coordinate axes. So Z right here makes that one infrared active, and the X and Y being here makes this particular uh, inf one infrared, infrared active. A2 is not infrared active because it does not have one of the X, Y, or Z coordinate axes associated with it. So if we look at an infrared spectrum of ammonia, we expect a total of four bands, two of them having totally symmetric representations of A1, and two of them having the sim same symmetry as the representation E. That is how to do uh, the symmetry point group analysis for ammonia.